<laughs> this is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Welcome to Covered in Pet Hair, a boozy web show for pet lovers on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Isabel Alvarez Arada, and today I have the pleasure of having a drink and a chat with a lady that is making the world a more beautiful place, one dog at a time. I'll tell you all about her and introduce you as soon as we come back from these messages from our sponsors. Welcome back to Covered in Pet Hair. I'm your host, Isabel Alvarez Arada, and today I have the pleasure of having a drink and getting into the psyche of a pet parent, a pet photographer, a dog person, a foodie, a cocktail connoisseur. She's a tea drinker, a world traveler, and a road tripper, a native of the great state of Virginia. She's wife to Frank, dogma to Rue, a chihuahua, and Gracie, a papillon. She's a lady that insists that pet parents don't brush their dog's teeth enough And she's Northern Virginia's premier mobile dog groomer, Kelly Ford. Welcome, Kelly. Thank you. (laughs) It's so exciting to have you on the show. So we have a mutual friend. And doesn't she have dogs named Rue and Gracie as well? Does she? I think she does. But you spell Rue differently. But she has a Rue. Okay. She spells hers in the the Rue, like making a Rue, R-O-U-X, I think. And then her other dog is Gracie. So when I saw that, I was like, they're friends and their dog's names are the same. You know what? That's crazy because I didn't even think about that. Gracie came with her name to us. So we didn't name her, but Rue, my husband named her. She was named at the shelter. It was Rooney and he kept it Rue. That is so strange. That's so cool. I like (laughs) Rue. Rue's cute. Rooney and Rue is cute. Very, very cute. Before we go any further, anybody participating in our drinking game today, anytime you hear this word, make sure you take a drink of whatever you're enjoying, but please be of age wherever you're joining us from. Never drink and drive and always drink responsibly. What are you drinking today, Kelly? I am having a vodka and iced tea. No, it is an ice pick. Yes. An ice pick? Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. I was a bartender for 20 years before I was a dog groomer. Well, I mean... I... Yeah, I'd much now. I decided I didn't want to serve drinks to people anymore, and it just got too hectic. And I'd rather be bit by a dog than cursed out by a person. <laughs> so I switched careers, and look at this ice pick it is. <laughs> I love that. I'd rather be bit by a dog than cursed out by a drunk person. <laughs> anymore, I, I, yeah. I don't. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Like I, yeah, I would probably I just, do the same. I would probably choose the same. I had had enough. <laughs> You know, I was a server for a really long time and yeah, like food service gets old and I can only imagine bartending even more so because the bartender is making the drinks not only for the people at the bar, but the people who are in the restaurant. So it's like almost twice the work that the servers have in probably less time because everybody's drunk and desperate for their drink. Absolutely. (laughs) You nailed it. Everybody wants what they want right now. Right now. Well, I'm having a bourbon uh, Paloma. So it's inspired by the drink, the Paloma, which is kind of like a breakfast margarita. Usually it's made with white tequila and grapefruit juice. But this one is made with grapefruit juice and bourbon because I felt like having a little bourbon. There's a little bit of bitters in there and a splash of soda. So cheers. Thanks for being on the show with me today. Cheers. I'm so excited. I love your cup, by the way. It took a lot of thought. I put a lot of thought into this. I didn't know whether we should go with the intellectual look or happy, but we went That's a golden retriever wearing glasses. Mm -hmm. Always appropriate. Always. Always. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, I always introduce this show with a game. And today we're playing Two Truths and a Lie. Oh, goodness. Okay. All right. And this is all based on mobile grooming since you are Northern Virginia's premier mobile groomer. Okay. Thank you. All right. Mostly this is about the industry because I think people don't get just what it takes to become and maintain a mobile grooming business, right? It's not easy. 
It's not. <laughs> and there's a lot more to it than we probably imagine. Right. I did some research, but I'm going to learn more from you today. So the, there are okay. three sentences in each. One of them's a lie. You ready to play? I am. <laughs> the first one, the initial cost for a mobile grooming banner trailer can range anywhere from $10,000 to $100,000. A mobile grooming vehicle must have proper flooring and ventilation. Waste is disposed of per the groomer's personal preference. Can you spot the lie in there? The last one? The last one is a lie. That's right. Municipal and environmental ordinances and regulations exist for the waste that you comes out of these mobile grooming trucks. Um, a lot of it is just gray water. I know people say, oh, it's just, but it's really kind of like washing your car. There's not a whole lot of, I mean, these, you know, things like that. But yeah. I, I have, I have been knocked on the window where I thought I was dumping somewhere safe and I've had people knock on my window and you can't do that. I was like, okay, I didn't know. So it takes a little getting used to to know what you can and can't do. Okay. That was, a, was a lie. That's a good one. That's a, that's good to know. Okay. Next one. Mobile grooming is potentially a better option for pets that get stressed when traveling by car. Mobile grooming is cheaper than in salon grooming and pets don't have to sit in a cage for hours like they often do at regular salons. Where's the lie? One that mobile grooming is cheaper. That's right. Mobile <laughs> grooming is not cheaper. Why would anything coming to your house be cheaper than you taking something somewhere, right? People think they do. I swear they do. They're like, what? It's that? I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. What do you want? <laughs> yeah. So. If I'm driving to you and only caring for your pet, you're paying more. It's kind of like a pet sitter coming to your home or a, your dog going to doggy daycare, right? Same thing. Like, I hate to say, but uh, you know, in the industry, they call it, it's a luxury service. And I, and I hate to say luxury because I mean, I'm just a normal girl making dogs pretty, making people happy, you know, but it is kind of a luxury service. You don't have to do much. You don't even have to be home. You know, if you I have clients that trust me enough, I just use the code, go in, get the dog, come out, do it. They're not even home, you know? So it is a luxury service, so it does cost. For sure. Anything that is that convenient comes with a, at a premium. Absolutely. Next one. Among the advantages of owning a mobile grooming business, as opposed to operating out of a brick and mortar location, is that you don't have to pay rent or property taxes or utility costs. Wear and tear on your body is lower as a mobile groomer, yet your hours are more flexible. That's a lie. The wear and tear is still the same. I think it's worse because you're driving. Right. And I'm also fixing equipment if I need to. Like I'm, you know, filling up water, I'm dumping things, and you know, fixing generators and stuff. Yeah, so yeah, that was the lie. That is definitely the lie. I made that up completely knowing that if I had to drive around Northern Virginia, there would be some serious wear and tear on my psyche, on my body, just sitting there and on my fist clenching my uh, steering wheel, a little people road raging. Have, people have passed me on 66 and they say, Kelly, every time we see you, you like this, like white fist. I'm like, well, I drive a trailer. I'm scared. I'm, you know, I gotta go on 66, so. Yeah, Northern Virginia is where I used to have my business. So I'm very yes. familiar with it, but it's funny. We never knew each other while I was running a business over there. That's the strangest thing I've ever seen. I know. I know. I've done some research on you. I love you. <laughs> oh, thanks. Thanks. I appreciate that. And I seriously wish we had had, you know, the opportunity to like work together. I, you, I can't tell you how many times people ask me for a mobile groomer right. and I didn't know mm -hmm. who to refer them to. And people would ask me, who's going to come take care of my dog for this? I'm like, oh, you know. Yeah, for sure. Well, I want to know how you started as a mobile grooming service. Like, did you work in a brick and mortar location prior? I did. I went to grooming school and then um, I worked for Pet Supplies Plus. That was my first corporate job. Um, and then I worked for a girlfriend of mine who actually owned the bar restaurant that I worked at. So she became a mobile groomer or a brick and mortar groomer. So after a few years, I watched her do it and I was like, well, you know, I can do that. That'd be, you know, so finally I just decided and then I would groom out of my home. I went, I worked at a couple of vets offices and um, then I started grooming out of my home, but I lived in a condo. So someone told on me in the HOA, the zoning committee said, oh, hey, you know, you can't do that. I said to my husband, I said, I'm going to have to do something. I said, I'm either going to have to rent a place because I have too many clients to just say no, or I'm going to have to go mobile. And so I did my research and i trailer was the more affordable option for me at the time and that's how it went so it went from there and I never thought I could do it but if you put your mind to something you can it wasn't easy but it wasn't 
It wasn't hard. It was, you know, it was good. It was a, a good challenge. A it was a good challenge. challenge. Yes. Well, how did you decide on a trailer and how did you actually get it set up? Um, I just, I, a lot of Facebook research, type in mobile grooming trailers. Um, there's a lot of companies out there that have terrible reviews. Things are, you know, catching on fire and things. Uh, so I stayed away from those. I narrowed it down. I had a list. I would pick and choose. I had little post-it notes everywhere. And all. I did a lot of research, which I'd never done before. And I was like, well, this must be really important to me. So yeah, you just got to narrow it down and see what fits your pocketbook and what's the easiest for you to maintain. And yeah. what fancy features do you have on your trailer? Um, if any? I, well, I brought my own. He, the, the gentleman who made mine, he's wonderful. He's a groomer himself. So he just buys the naked trailer and then he outfits it with stuff. I came with my own table and things. Um, I don't know. Uh, nothing really yet, but I'm trying to get a really cool wrap for the outside. So I mean, oh. it's not your normal everyday trailer, but uh, yeah, I've got my own little, it's like a human bathtub. It's not the stainless steel one. It's kind of like a little spa inside. But it's comfy. Very yeah. cool. So um, <laughs> the great thing about mobile grooming is when you have that wrap, like that's like a, a vert, like it's like a, a, a mobile billboard for Absolutely. your own business, especially I mean, for I, mobile I've, grooming. I've done it myself with, you know, vinyl lettering and put it on and stuff, but you know, I, I trial and error. I mean, I've been in business for a few years, but you know, you just got to start over sometimes and get yourself a new look. And so that's my new thing. I'm trying to get a new wrap. <laughs> yeah. I think that there's a lot of initial investments. So going little by little is makes sense for sure. So, um, I found out I was doing some research cause I don't know anything about these things. Um, so you obviously have a generator in yes. your trailer. Yes. Um, it is in the front of the trailer. It's not attached to it except for wires. Um, but like the, the mobile grooming vans, they will have it built into the van. Mine is in front. Um, and it's, uh, generators are costly. I mean, if you get a good one, you're, you're good to go, but I do have a lot of generator problems sometimes. Uh, I'm not going to lie. And that, you know, but that's the worst part about it. <laughs> little by little, little by little. Trying to keep that maintained. Um, do you have a canine dryer? I had, the, you mean the, the brand? No, the, like it's a, a canine dryer where you like put the dog in it oh, and it God. dries. No, not, not because I, I think they're, I had, we, they had one at Pet Supplies Plus when I worked there. They're not terrible. You just, you don't turn the heat on, but people get all freaked out about that. But no, um, I have a high velocity hand dryer. Okay. Very cool. Yeah, do, you so ever just, dry, do you ever blow dry your own hair? With that? With sometimes. It? Yeah, well, I blow all the dog hair too off my face. Ah, uh, yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Covered in pet hair all the time. <laughs> covered in pet hair. Yes, I know. I can only imagine. Um, how about ace air conditioning? Is the trailer air conditioned? Mm -hmm. I've got a little Coleman, you know, little unit up top, and I have heat. I have air. I have everything in it. It's wonderful. Okay. Um, I do not like it when I pull up to places and I, I the houses I don't have Wi-Fi. Oh man, yeah. Some places don't have Wi-Fi. Believe it or not, but that's my only gripe. Thanks so do you ask your clients for their Wi-Fi info? If I'm going to be there, if they have like three dogs or more, if I'm going to be there all day, I'm like, yeah, can I have the password so I can at least have some? <laughs> some all going. right. Insider tip, guys, please yep. make sure that you give your mobile groomer your Wi-Fi password. They've earned it. And so that way they can watch this show while they're grooming. Okay. Just That's right. No. I, listen right. To you. I listen to you all day today. Oh, well, thank you. I love it. Thank you so much. Um, how about a clipper vac? I just learned about that. Groomer's best friend. Really? Mm -hmm. They're pricey too. I have that in there that installed. He screwed it into the bottom of the trailer to the floor. It doesn't go anywhere. Um, yeah, I wouldn't live without one. Okay. So tell me how expensive are clippers and how expensive is the groomer, the, the, the clipper vac the that clipper goes along vac, with it? I have a small clipper vac. It's called a tote. Um, I'm going to say about four years ago, $700. So they can range anywhere from that cheap to two grand, two, three grand, you know, the bigger you need them. Yeah. Grooming equipment is not cheap. My clippers, they're about 150, 175. Is that comparable to like a hairdresser for humans? It is. It is. Okay. And, um, actually I think, I think, uh, human hair shears are more expensive than the grooming shears. Ooh, I think so. I don't know why, but you know, so, but yeah, so are they interchangeable? Could, could, could a human, could human hairdressers or stylists I have, I have use bought, them? I've bought uh, hair dress clippers or scissors before. So I, I think they work fine. I mean, you know. But the, the thing, the difference is we cut hair dry. 
they cut hair wet. Depends on so, the stylus, right? Yeah. On, on this, on the stainless steel coating or whatever you need to keep to maintain them. Nice. Okay. So we have to take a break, okay. but as soon as we come back from these messages from our sponsors, I want to have, um, play another game with you about your pet peeves, oh. uh, with a uh, pet parent. Ooh. We'll be right back. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome back to Covered in Pet Hair. I'm your host, Isabel alvarez Arada, and today I'm talking to a mobile groomer that works out of Northern Virginia, my former hometown. Um, and I want to play a game with her that I call Pet Peeves, and this will be the grooming edition, okay? So this is kind of a, this is kind of a phone it in game for me. You have to do all the work. I'm going to give you a minute. <laughs> to tell me all of the pet peeves that you have when it okay. comes to grooming, pet parents, and things that pet parents just don't do that you wish they did. Ready? Yep. One, two, three, go! If you own a doodle, you need to brush it every day. I don't care whether it doesn't like it or not, you just need to brush your doodle every day. You need to get into that habit. Number two, if I'm coming to your house, flip your dog's nails, God love you. Don't molly coddle the dog. I don't have time for that. Um, yeah, molly calling, not brushing, um, and the teeth brushing. I can't brush your dog's teeth once. If you don't brush them at home every day, I don't, I, I'm not gonna take your $15, $20 to brush your dog's teeth because it's not gonna help any, so I'll save you that. I'm pretty laid back about my parents, my pet yeah. parents. They know me. They know I'm gonna do whatever I can to make their dog pretty. I won't shave it if I don't have to. But... So I will say, um, the dog br teeth brushing is hard. It's hard right now. It's hard. It's been hard forever. Like I look back before I had children and I was like, well, I probably could have made that work, but I didn't because I found something else to do instead. So I do have a tip though, that I learned from a veterinarian in Northern Virginia, um, Dr. Rhymes, who's in the Burke area. And okay. I had just gotten my dog socks, um, teeth cleaned. And he said, after dental cleanings, that's when you have to start up. If you have Absolutely. been slacking, do it then. And Absolutely. it's okay if you didn't do it as their, when they're puppies, you waited till they're six or whatever, just start then. Cause then the, the tartar's clear and then right. you can actually maintain that. Right. And I, your groomer will be happier with you. It's, it's a partnership. <laughs> For sure. I totally agree with that. And actually, so now I want to get into the um, benefits of mobile grooming because in the research that I did, it seemed overwhelmingly um, popular to think that maybe an under socialized dog or a dog that is um, uncomfortable with strangers, with other dogs, would really benefit from a mobile grooming situation rather than sending them into a mobile, uh, I'm sorry, into a grooming salon. Right. They absolutely do. And um, I always spend, if it's a new dog and they always say, or oh, they're anxious or if they have any kind of issues, I'll spend about five, 10 minutes with them sitting on the floor of the trailer, just, you know, saying hi, getting to know them. Uh, where I can touch them, where they're going to let me be comfortable with them and things like that. Yeah, you can't rush anything. Um, I always tell people, I'm like, yeah, you know, if it takes a while, it takes a while. So I, I give people blocks of time where I'm going to be. So and I, if I have a regular customer and a new one before that, I'll say, hey, I got a new a new pup today. So I may be a little later. I would just let them know. But yeah, you got to take your time and see what that dog is going to be comfortable with. And they're much happier when there's no other dogs. They really I do. agree. They, 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 yeah. When you get a brother sister combo or two brothers and they say, do you want them together? I'm like, sometimes I don't because they'll feed off each other and they won't let me get done what I need to get done. So, but yeah, as long as we're all by ourselves, we're good. Okay. Perfect. And I feel like the grooming experience for a dog, like I go to get my hair done and I get bored and I start <laughs> like going through, you know, like my phone and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, kind of like, ugh, when is this going to end? And no, like, no offense to my stylist. She's wonderful. But especially with COVID and masks, we don't chat that much. So right. it's like, ugh, such a drag. So I'm, I'm imagining from a dog's perspective that this is such a drag. Like, it I is. don't want to be like touched all over and trimmed and I don't know what's happening. And I really much rather be on the couch licking myself, right? Like from a dog's <laughs> perspective, right? True. Yeah. Uh, I, I sing to him. I talk to him. I make fun. I, you know, like, yeah, we just, I try to keep him busy and I always ask when they have treats, I bribe them. You know, I mean, I'm not opposed to bribing. You got to do what you got to do to get things done. You can't. For <laughs> sure. Oh yeah. And that's, it's just positive reinforcement. So, um, do you use muzzles when it's necessary? If, uh, 
thank God that's another, I forgot to say, that's another pet peeve. If your dog is aggressive and you know it, you got to tell me, you know, I have no problem with them. I just need to know how to handle them. I can't, you know, but yes, if you do, if you tell me your dog needs a muzzle, I'm going to believe you 100% and I will do it. I won't even ask any questions because why, why mess with it? You know, I don't want to cause a problem and then go realize, oh, maybe I should have put a muzzle on. So Right. Have you but, ever yeah. been bit? Uh, not broken some skin and a little bit of bleeding, but nothing, nothing crazy to them. Nothing. Mm-hmm. And, and all the dogs, they, they bite out of fear. They don't, they don't bite because they, they're mad at you. You know, like if you, you know, they just bite out of fear and you just got to work around that and go slow. And if, if it happens and there's some things you can't do with a dog, you just don't, you know, I have a, probably two or three dogs that I cannot clip their nails without them trying to kill themselves or me. So we just don't do that part. <laughs> even know? muzzled, even muzzled. Absolutely. Sometimes they will like, they'll, they'll thrash so much and, you know, cause we touch their, oh yeah. And so oh, you just don't want to, I don't want to make anybody uncomfortable. So we just don't do that. You go to the, they go to the vet for that. <laughs> Got it. They go to the vet for that. They go yes. to the vet for, for hard nail trims. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I have two dogs. Well, one of them passed, but the, my, my Titan who's four, almost 14, he hates his nails trimmed. And I think it's because somebody hurt him in some point in his life. And he's like, yeah, he's like never going to forget it. (laughs) Yep. They're like elephants when it comes to that. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) So, um, do you carry just like different sizes of muscles? Like, and, and it's, is it just like the little fabric muscles that we see at the vet? Well, I got the duck bill muzzles. Okay. Ones from Amazon. They look like little duck bills. <clears throat> and I only have two because I don't really handle the larger dogs anymore because I can't lift them and they're oh. stronger than me. So I usually do at the most about 40, 45 pounds. If I can't lift them into the tub and handle them at the same time, then so mostly my just medium and small muzzles for the little guys. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's yeah. smart. So but they do, do look you- cute with their little duck bill. Do you um, have um, special like different clippers for different breeds and different cuts and different like products for different hair and such absolutely uh i do use a good product it's called the stuff on all the dogs um and it uh takes a lot of tangles out and it also gets the undercoat out of any kind of little dog even like a a chihuahua has a little undercoat or any kind of terriers they have undercoats um the stuff is good um just different sides blades mostly the clippers are pretty much the same you have cordless or corded um the cordless ones are good uh, the corded ones are more heavy duty. Um, but yeah, it's just a matter of blade sizes and, uh, comb attachments. Um, I have great combs. I, I, combs are expensive, but they work They're you know, so yeah. And, oh, I'm a member of the scissor of the month club. So that's always good. So you get a new pair every month. I was just going to ask you about scissors. (laughs) Yes. So I hear scissors are very like a big deal and they're expensive too. But even, but even some of the best ones that I paid twenty dollars for, are, are, I've had for ten years. You know, so oh. yeah. So you, it just it it's a matter of what you like and what fits your style. But I do like the Scissor of the Month Club. So I get Who's, a new pair. The Scissor it's, of the Month Club by? It's, it's great. It's a uh, Foxy Roxy. Okay, that's their name, and uh, I think it's like forty five dollars a month, and that you get a new pair of scissors every month, and they send you all kinds of different kinds. You can try them. So I look at it this way. I'm spending $45 a month. That's not bad to try what, to see what I like. And, and they have good quality. So Foxy Rock. And how, uh, how long um, do you have, can you use that scissor before having to like sharpen it and such? Okay. I'm really bad about that. Uh, you should probably get them sharpened every couple months. I think I, I'm assuming, I think that's what it is. Every couple months. I do mine probably about every four months. I bet. I haven't found a good scissor guy. You got one for me? I need a good scissor. Oh, you know what's funny is I don't know a good scissor guy, but I yeah. remember I remember years ago in Northern Virginia or in the DMV, uh-huh. there was a there was a mobile knife sharpening service. And I remember thinking that was brilliant. So mm-hmm. what where is the where is the the scissor sharpener guy? Like where we is have, need to find it? There was a mobile guy, but I can't find him anymore. He's gone. I don't know what happened. Okay. Anybody looking to launch a new career post COVID (laughs) might be a good thing to look into in Northern Virginia. (laughs) Come back and help me. Come back. Exactly. I mean, nobody wants to do that. My husband sharpens my knives and we have, 
we have kind of an understanding that I'm not very good using knives, so they can't be too sharp. They can't be too sharp. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I never sharpen knives. Like I will use a dull knife forever. Obviously I'm not cooking professionally. So if I were <laughs> professionally, I'd want somebody to do it just right. Just to my liking. That's right. All right. So last question for you, what can pet parents do to prepare their pet for their first ever experience with a mobile groomer? Just the normal things where, um, I mean, usually I try to have them walk them out to the trailer so they can, I'm like, Hey mom, dad's coming with you. They're going to put you in there. So, um, yeah, I just have them walk out with them, make them feel comfortable and get them in there. And, you know, we say, Hey, time to have your little spa day and kisses and hugs. And yeah, so just, um, I think it's all a matter of they're if they're anxious, I would rather have the parent bring them in and make them comfortable. If they're a friendly, happy dog, well, you know, jump right in there. So uh, nothing really to care. How about expectation setting for the pet parent? Sometimes it, like if there's a difficult dog, I tell them, here's what we're going to try today. I may not be able to get everything done. And if I can't, then we're going to work around that. We'll do something. But um, I'm always straightforward. Um, I'm not going to tell you that I'm going to demat your dog when I'm not, if it needs to be taken down, it needs to because of their comfort. I'm not doing it for any vanity reasons. Um, yeah, you just got to prepare them and tell them how's it going to go. And I text them during while I'm in the trailer, I'll text them and be like, Hey, we just got out of the bath, getting ready to get dried. So-and-so didn't like this too much. So we're going to do this at the end, you know, so just keep in contact with them. They like that. That's good. I, I so, totally hear that. So my they're son, babies, they're, I mean, yeah, they're, they're, yeah. they're children, they're babies. You have to take care of someone's babies. Yeah. So. For sure. My son just started school and like the first two days they sent me a <laughs> message, like a text. And then they didn't on Wednesday, Thursday. And then Friday they messaged me to come get him. Cause he was sick anyway. But yeah. I really appreciated like the text because in our industry, mm -hmm. when I was in the pet care industry, we had an automated like messages that every time my staff members left a house, they would send an update. So every visit, whether it was one or three a day, the pet parent would get them a, a, like an update. Absolutely. And for me, for my human child, I didn't get anything. And I'm like, I'm spoiled because I'm used to the way we do it in the pet care industry. We do a better job than Montessori schools. Apparently, I was going to say, you know, some people love their pets more than their children. So I'm not going <laughs> to. No, I, I agree. I and you know what, but this is the thing I'm wondering if my clients, my clients back then, when I had my business expected the same amount of communication from their, their kids schools as they got from us. Cause we set the bar high. Right. You should have said, totally well, yeah, you're gonna say I'm the best. You're not gonna get this from the school, so you're gonna have to call them. <laughs> I know exactly. I mean, I'm gonna have to give them a lesson in uh, client communication. Uh, um, so thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today. How can our um get our listeners and viewers get in touch with you if they're in Northern Virginia? Uh, I'm on Facebook. Lots of paws, mobile dog grooming. Um, I think that's about. I do have a um. I have. I think I have the link to my website on the Facebook page. So yeah, it's just so far now I'm on Facebook, but I know. Tons of people see me driving around and they, you know, call me and I like it. So it's good. Or they stop me, which is fine. I'm fine with that. Anybody's fine. They're like, can I ask you a question? I'm like, yeah, if you can watch me clip this dog's nails and I'll be with you. But you know, so. Um, what areas of Northern Virginia do you cover? Um, I live in Front Royal. When I started the business, I lived in Manassas. So um, I do most of Manassas, not Manassas, Manassas, Bristow, Gainesville, Haymarket, um, and down towards Front Royal. So mostly nice. just kind of up 66, you know, and. If I can get to your house, I will, but I don't do mountains and I don't do crazy terrain because I'm still a girl when it comes to driving the trailer. So, <laughs> and no especially when the weather is bad. Oh, it's crazy. And you know, Northern Virginia weather, it's not kind. <laughs> no, no, it's not kind. And people can't drive in the snow or the rain or anything right. like that. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you again. I want to propose a toast to you. To, uh, for taking the time to chat with me, but also for making the world a more beautiful place, one dog at a time. I love that little tagline. It's so adorable. I Thank had to say you. it again. Thank you I so much. You. So much. <laughs> it's wonderful. Thank you. I also okay. want to propose a toast to our executive producer, Mark Winter, for making this show possible. To our viewers on YouTube and to our uh, listeners on Pet Life Radio, thank you for joining us and to spending your time with us. Here's to a life covered in pet hair because there's no better way to live. Cheers. Cheers. To learn more about Covered in Pet Hair, please visit CoveredInPetHair.com or PetLifeRadio.com. 
Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.